I've installed Proxmox on this desktop computer and now I'm back in the lab with this. If you don't know what it is, it's CCR2004 1G 2XS PCIe card. It looks like a NIC, but it is actually a full-blown router. If you no longer want to have a separate router in your room, you can get away with this, or you can just use it as a very powerful NIC that supports additional configuration through router OS. If you look at the ports, you can see a one gig management port, but this router actually has a very powerful CPU and four gigs of RAM, so it can handle quite a bit through that management port. But most importantly, it has two SFP28 cages that can be simply passed through your host device as two 25 gig Ethernet ports. So, can we create virtual machines in Proxmox that have 25 gig Ethernet ports? I don't know. Let's find out. The card is in and the first thing I had to do after inserting it and powering on my Proxmox was to grab a physical keyboard and a monitor to fix configuration. Because you see, I used an integrated uh, network card in my previous setup. And just the way Linux and Proxmox work is that the configuration is based on interface, network interface names, but those interface names are uh, derived at the boot up process. So since the router, uh, router board card gets uh, loaded earlier in the uh, boot process, that changed um, the integrated network card's name a little bit. And hence I had to go to a configuration file that we actually edited in the previous Proxmox video for the optional DHCP step. That's slash ETC slash network slash interfaces. And in that file, there is an iFace name that uh, now needs to be edited. And there's also the VMBR0 setup, which has that iFace listed as a bridge port. So you need to edit those two lines and then your old Proxmox setup will work. If you're doing a fresh installation, however, there will be no problems whatsoever. Now on the Proxmox GUI, we can see there's four new Ethernet interfaces that were added by this router board card. The, um, the normal behavior is that the first two are simply pass-through interfaces for the SFP28 cages, and the other two you can use to your liking. Um, they should be bridged to the management port. Then you can see I've created some more VMBR here and I've simply bridged them to those two pass-through interfaces so that I can assign them to virtual machine NICs. And I've also installed here an x86 so that we can test the throughput. Now, uh, installing x86 is a little bit different than CHR, but it's uh, pretty simple. All you need to do is take the x86 ISO file and copy it to the default location on Proxmox that stores ISO files. And then when you add a new virtual machine, you have the option to use that ISO as installation media. And on the x86 configuration, all I've done is just bridged those two ports. Um, so I've essentially created a little loop here. If you send data in through one SFP28, it will go, uh, it will be passed on to Proxmox, which will then bridge it to the virtual machine, which bridges it to the other uh, Proxmox uh, bridge interface. And it comes out through pass-through through the other SFP28 cage. And by the way, you can access the CCR2004 uh, router board card in many different ways. Uh, but in my case, I've just used a one ethernet cable on the management port for easier, easier monitoring. And then I've got two 25 gig uh, cables that go all the way over to this other router board I got here. And what I'll do is I'll use this router board to generate traffic that goes in through one uh, 25 gig cable. And then we'll see what we get coming back out through the other one. 
Okay, so now if I start my x86 virtual machine and go to this other router that can generate traffic for me, uh, I've used here uh, a tool called Traffic Generator and I've created one uh, traffic stream that will generate about 10 gigabits a second. So now if I click Start, we are sending, okay, we're sending about 8.7 gigabits per second and we're receiving back about 3.8, 3.9 gigabits. Okay, it's, it's moving around 3.8 gigabits per second. Now it's, there's somewhere a bottleneck. I can actually do a little tweak here. Uh, if I actually stop this and I edit the packet stream, I've used packet size 512. Uh, if I just double it to 1024, the throughput will go up considerably as well. So you can see now we're getting 7.5 gigabits going through, um, which is better, but we're probably not going to be able to squeeze out much more from this setup. Um, if I look at my Proxmox, um, it appears that I'm using somewhere between 30 and 40% uh, CPU uh, right now. But somewhere there is actually a bottleneck. This is a, a six core CPU, 12 threads, and it has uh, some pretty good uh, RAM, 32 gigs. So the RAM is not the issue. And the CPU, even though it looks like it's not being used that much, somewhere there is a bottleneck, unfortunately. I've actually installed HTOP on, on the Proxmox so I can view uh, separate cores with that. And for most part, the cores are not um, under that heavy of a load, but we can see that every now and then one of the cores jumps up to like 100%. So perhaps that is the limitation. Maybe there is some other, some other bottleneck somewhere there. I tried to set up um, multi-queue on Proxmox. Maybe I did it wrong, I don't know. Um, Multi-queue for Proxmox, if you don't know, uh, is just a configuration where uh, the Proxmox will try to use multiple cores to process any network traffic going through it. Because by default, it would only use one core, which could be a limitation as well. In this case, it looks like all cores are being used, but we're still, we're, we're bogged down quite a bit. Um, if I open the x86, and we look at system resources, you can see that the CPU load on the x86 is 21%. We're barely using any RAM at all. If I monitor, you can see that um, cores are pretty equally used as well. Um, or at least, well, two of them are kind of under load. But still, none of them are cooking at 100%. So x86 virtual machine is not experiencing any problems whatsoever. Actually, if you monitor the interfaces, you can see that the there's about uh, 7.8 coming in and roughly the same amount going out from x86. So that is not the bottleneck. If we look at the uh, speeds generated here, it's somewhere around nine gigabits per second on this router. And actually, that's uh, the one device that's cooking the most right now. Uh, if I look at the CPU cores on it. It's okay, it has one core uh, at maximum. So right now that's probably uh, the biggest issue is um, the amount of traffic that we can actually generate on this router. But Proxmox is the next, uh, or somewhere, is the CPU in the host or something in the host is the next bottleneck. Okay, so the device that's generating the traffic is under quite a bit of load as well. And we only got one stream of traffic going, which could also um, sort of put more load on a single core. So let's create several traffic streams and see if that changes anything.
Okay, I've created four uh, streams of three gigabits each. So that should even now the load over uh, multiple CPU cores. Uh, don't worry if you don't, if you can't follow the traffic generator setup, um, I'll create a separate video about using that tool as well. So now if I run this traffic, Okay, I'm getting a similar amount of throughput. If I look at the router board card. Okay, and the router board card is now being utilized um, around 25% uh, CPU overall, and two cores are around 50%. So there's plenty more room for more uh, performance. I actually tested it by uh, using 125G cable to simply uh, connect the two SFB28 cages. And then I generated and received the traffic in a virtual machine. And then again, I found that the uh, Proxmox was a bottleneck. It was just uh, cooking the CPU and um, wasn't able to generate too much of tra traffic in the first place. Uh, but if you have any tips on how to improve throughput for high speed interfaces on Proxmox, let us know in the comments. I will try it out and I'll let everybody know if we can get this router board card to perform even better than this. Thank you for watching. Take care.